What's going on YouTube? Today we've got the recently updated 2023 Subaru Forester Touring. And we want to know, is this Forester a great buy in such a crowded segment? Let's go ahead and find out. So like always, let's kick things off with our spec dump and under the hood. So we still have the same engine for 2023. That's going to be a 2.5 liter boxer four cylinder. That's gonna be making 182 horsepower, 176 pound feet of torque, and is mated to a continuously variable transmission. Now, of course, in Subaru fashion, you do have standard symmetrical all wheel drive. And as far as your fuel economy is concerned, it's gonna be 29 miles a gallon combined, which does make this one of the most efficient all wheel drive offerings in the segment. Now you heard me mention at the beginning, this was recently updated. So let's go ahead and close up the hood and take a look at the redesigned exterior. So getting started here with the exterior design, like we already mentioned, this was refreshed in 2022. And with that came some new design elements, particularly here in the front. So let's talk about the grill. You'll notice we have black accents that run around the grill. This is a new thing that was added to all of the trim levels. Plus on the touring trim level, we have this gray accent up here at the top. We also have this silver accent down here at the bottom. Now I want to point out another thing that was updated. That was the fact that they added a wilderness trim level and that completely changes up the front design to look a lot tougher. It also increases ground clearance to 9.2 inches from the standard 8.7 inches you see here today, which is really exceptional for the class, by the way. Let's take a look at our headlights. So really nice here. We have standard LED adaptive headlights. Again, a rare feature for the class. You've got the LED daytime running light right there and an incandescent turn signal. Down below, we have three silver accents here on the touring trim level, and you'll also get fog lamps on all but the base model. They're gonna be LED here on the touring. Now in the front, the changes are pretty noticeable, but as we come around to the rear, they're a lot more subtle. Yeah, for sure. It definitely has that signature Forester design to it. A lot of you guys really like that Subaru look. You're definitely going to find that on this Forester. Now, Drew's going to go ahead and hop inside and show off one of the main elements of the rear design, the tail lights, and we're going to see if all three elements are LED. So we have an LED brake light portion, incandescent reverse light, incandescent turn signal. So one out of three elements are LED. Now, this was a slightly uh, revised design for the refresh, uh, although it looks mostly the same. and has that boomerang shape to it. Now dropping down, we do have our touring branding specific for this trim level. And then down at the very bottom, we're gonna have a really nice uh, kind of textured black plastic down here. We also have this chrome piece here on the touring, which kind of spices up the design. We're gonna have an exposed exhaust outlet here on the right side with the chrome finish. And as far as your tow rating is concerned, every Forester can tow about 1,500 pounds. Now moving on to the wheels, you do have 17 and 18 inch options. 17s will be on the bottom two trims and the top three trims will come with 18 inch alloy wheels. As you can see here with the Touring, really nice look to this. You've got the contrast design with the five contrast spokes. Moving up here to our mirrors. Here with the Touring, you do have the exclusive satin silver finish on the mirrors. And as far as the features, you're gonna have heating starting at the premium trim level, blind spot monitoring standard starting at the sport trim level, and we also have the optional auto dimming on this model. Now, at the side of this Forester, you're gonna have that signature Subaru design, and in terms of the overall length, we're looking at 182.1 inches long. Now, as far as some of the design elements, we have chrome around our window surrounds. We also have these large roof rails, and if you go for at least a premium trim, these were actually updated last year to support 220 pounds in motion and up to 800 pounds uh, it's stationary. So you can actually put a rooftop tent on your Forester if you go for at least that premium trim level or above. 
I also really like the look of this silver roof rail in contrast with the brilliant bronze paint color, which looks about like the toilet bowl after I go to Taco Bell. Now, as far as the safety systems are concerned, you're going to be very happy with this because Subaru is including all four of your active ones as standard equipment on every single Forester. So even that base one is going to have all four of them, including adaptive cruise. Now, the one caveat to that is that if you go for the top end touring like what we have today, you will also get rear auto braking. But guys, there's also a brown interior on the inside, so let's go ahead and check that out. So let's go ahead and get inside. First, let's take a look at our key fob, though. As you can see, typical Subaru affair. You do have a smart entry system standard on the premium trim level and above. That means you can just reach behind the door handle and that will unlock the door. Now take a look inside of the cabin. Like Mason mentioned, it is brown. It is also the most luxurious version of the cabin because we have the touring trim level. Now let's start by talking about our seat materials. So the base model and the premium model will come with cloth seating. Once you go for the sport model that has a special cloth design and the wilderness comes with a synthetic leather. Limited and touring though come with the real leather you see on this model right here. As you can see, nicely finished. We've got a lot of perforation and stitching details. I also love that we have the color contrast. So this is brown, the main part of the seat, but we also have the black accents that run through it. If you don't like brown though, don't worry because you can also get black on the Touring. Down below, we are gonna have a 10-way power adjusting seat with two-way lumbar support standard on all but the base model. But let's go ahead and climb inside. when you climb in, you do get a little animation here on the three different displays. And let's go ahead and look at the overall cabin. The nice materials from the seat do follow through on the door trim. This is really nicely done. I love the way this looks. Again, we have the two-tone finish. So you have brown here, black up here, double stitching details, leather all through here, more cross stitching. Looks really, really nice. Your windows are going to be one touch auto up and down for the driver and passenger, by the way. And you do have memory seating on the touring trim level. It's going to be soft touch along the upper door trim, along the upper dash as well. We have more stitching detail, nice leather padding with the brown finish. And as we go down to the lower areas, again, you're going to find leather covering all of these places where your knees might touch. So really nicely done cabin. Now on all but the base model, you can just press the button to start it up. But like always, let's go ahead and move into a first person perspective and take a look at all the details. First off, we have our gauge cluster. This is the typical Subaru affair. You have analog gauges, then you have a 4.2 inch multi-function display located in the middle. It's got some basic information, except for uh, you're gonna want to use this display. The 6.3 inch display is actually where most of the multi-function information is going to be. You have things about your safety systems, off-road settings, even the weather. A lot of different information up here with this display, and this is going to be standard on the sport trim level and above. Now, you might also notice right there at the top, we have this little sensor. That is for the Touring exclusive driver monitoring system. So if it notices you're getting distracted or dozing off, it's going to beep and make sure you are paying attention. All right, let's go ahead and come back to the steering wheel. Again, typical Subaru design, nicely leather wrapped. It is going to be manual tilt and telescoping. You do also have steering wheel heating just on the touring trim level. Let's go ahead and take a look at interior storage next. So opening up our center console, we have a pretty nice amount of space. It is a little narrow, but it is nice and deep. And we do have a felt lining down there at the bottom as well as a 12 volt outlet. But let's see if it can take the coupons. Ah, there we go. No problem. Just a little bend in it, but it is definitely deep enough to hold the coupons without folding. Up in front of that, we've got two deep cup holders, a little storage cubby. And then the very front, we have a nice size storage bin with a rubber lining, two more USB ports, 12 volt outlet, and an aux jack. Now, as far as the shifter is a traditional style, just pull back for drive. You can bump over here to the left if you want to use these paddle shifters to go through some manual simulated gear changes. And then when in reverse, you will find a standard backup camera. As you can see, we do have active trajectory. We also have parking sensors on this top model and the mirror does tilt down when in reverse to help you see the parking lines better. 
Now, there is not a 360 degree camera option. However, on the wilderness trim level, you do also get a front camera, so you have that 180 degrees of camera coverage. And then back behind the shifter, you do have your electronic parking brake as well as your brake hold. Next to that, we have our X mode controller. This allows you to uh, you know, reconfigure the four wheel drive system for going off road. And then next to that, we have our heated seat control. So this is actually gonna be standard on all but the base model. However, seat ventilation is not included on any trim level. Rising on up again, we come to our climate controls. Automatic climate is actually gonna be standard. Dual zone climate starts on the limited trim level. So you just make your adjustments nice and easy with these big knobs. And when you do that, it is going to display up there on that top screen. And the next place we come to are our audio controls. This is a nine speaker Harman Kardon sound system. So let's go ahead and give it a sample. As you'd expect, overall sound quality is certainly very good for this class of vehicle, and it is an improvement over the six speaker sound system, which is standard on most of your lower trim levels. Now we've already talked about that top display. Now it's time to talk about the main infotainment display. So you've got two different screen sizes. Base through Sport are gonna come standard with a six and a half inch display. The rest of the trim levels will come standard with this eight inch display. This is running the typical Subaru Starlink infotainment software. So you have your apps running through there. Uh, you do also have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay abilities, but they do require a wired connection with this version of the system. Here at the Touring Trim level, we also have the built-in navigation system. Going up here, we do have an auto dimming mirror with compass and home link remotes. That's gonna be optional on all trim levels. And then taking a look up here at the roof, we have a really nice feature that stands out from the competition. And that's the fact that Subaru gives you this panoramic sunroof, which by the way, is a little smaller than what we typically call a panoramic sunroof. However, they offset that by the fact that this is standard on the premium trim level and above. That means everything except the base model is gonna get this huge piece of glass, which slides back a very long distance. All right, guys, come on back here. This Forester is a family vehicle, first and foremost. So, of course, this rear area is going to be very important. So let's go ahead and talk about the space first, and then we'll hit some of the features. 39.4 inches of legroom, 39.6 inches of headroom. Those are very good figures for the segments. Not exactly class-leading, but it's pretty close to it. So you're going to have a lot of space for all of your family back here. Now, as far as the space between my knees and the seat back, I'm 5'9". The seat is adjusted to Drew, who's five foot eight, and we have about eight inches of space between my knees and the seat back. Very impressive figure. My feet can easily slide up underneath the seat too. Look how tall the uh, underfloor area is. I just want to point out double seat back pockets, which is really nice. That's on both of the seats. And then as far as the features are concerned, here in the center, we're going to have vents on almost all of the uh, Forester models. And then dropping down below that, we have two USB ports that's going to be on sport trims and above and then you'll notice these right here we have heated seat bottoms so yeah you're going to be able to hit, get the sweaty crack in the Subaru Forester on all of your off-road adventures that's going to be touring exclusive now if we fold down the central armrest we do have a really nicely finished one black finish on this it's really comfortable armrest and we're also going to have piano black around our cup holders honestly you don't see stuff like that on a lot of luxury cars it's just little small details like that now as far as the door trim is concerned the same finishings as the front apply here so we have brown leather all through this part double cross stitching we also have a leather padded armrest portion and then down in the very bottom we have bottle storage now walking up to the tailgate in this forester we do have a power opening one that's going to be on limited and touring trim levels of the Forester and as far as the space is concerned once again a very good amount 29 cubic feet behind the second row seats and if we fold these babies down 
it's really nice and easy with that one press uh, system. We're looking at 74 cubic feet of cargo capacity. That makes it one of the largest offerings in the entire segment. Once again, it's just a few off of, from the uh, class leading figure. So you're gonna have a lot of space in this Forester. Now, as far as the features are concerned, we do have a cup holder, a cup holder. You do have a cargo cover uh, up here. And then you also have these switches here on the side. This is gonna be a touring exclusive feature. It allows you to just one press, quickly fold the second row. So if you're gonna be doing a lot of hauling in the Forester, you might wanna go for that fully loaded touring model. Now, as far as our tape measure, I did bring it, of course. You never know when you're gonna to need to measure things. And from the back of the passenger seat all the way to the cargo area end, we're looking at about 74 inches of space. So I'd say you're probably good to put a 70 inch flat screen in the rear area of this Forester. And if you need additional space, you can lift up the cargo floor. Under here, you have a little bit of underfloor storage. And underneath of that, you have your spare tire. Well guys, here we are behind the wheel of the 2023 Subaru Forester. Now in this test drive, we're gonna be talking about a lot of different information, as you can see right there. And we will go ahead and start with a hard acceleration so you can see what this Forester's powertrain is all about. acceleration up to about 60 miles per hour in the 2023 Forester. Now, like we mentioned at the spec dump, no changes to the engine configuration this year. So you still have the 2.5 liter Boxer 4. Um, no upgraded engine options in terms of things that offer more power, but it continues to have class competitive power figures, 182 horsepower, 176 pound feet of torque. Yeah, this is certainly uh, more than enough power for a vehicle in this segment. And one of the things I really like about um, this powertrain arrangement is that Subaru makes it feel very zippy. Yeah. Like I noticed that from, straight from a start, the combination of the engine, the throttle response, and the continuously variable transmission, might as well go ahead and mention that, they really work together very well to give you a zippy response right off the line. Yeah, it's real, real torquey off the line, and then, and then you know it kind of fades off as you get up to speed. Of course, it is only 182 horsepower, so it's not like a Mazda CX-5 Turbo by any means. But yeah, I think it's one of the more spunky ones off the line for sure. Now, one other nice thing about the Forester is that you do have standard all-wheel drive. That's a big selling point for any Subaru. Symmetrical all-wheel drives included on all of them. Uh, so you don't have to go for a top-end model or pay $2,000 for it. That's a big difference in this segment because the vast majority of them do not include all-wheel drive. It's not the only one that uh, includes standard all-wheel drive, but it is one of the few that definitely includes that. Now, as far as your fuel economy figures are concerned, you're going to have a very impressive fuel economy of 26 in the city, 33 highway 29 miles a gallon combined and of course since we do have all-wheel drive standard that's your only fuel economy figure for the Forester unless you go for the wilderness model which reduces your fuel economy down to 26 combined because it's going to be staying a little bit higher off the ground and you have some different aerodynamics going on with that model right there. Now, one thing I do also want to point out is that there is not a hybrid or plug-in or anything with this Forester. This is the only engine configuration. Of course, a lot of the competition now does have hybrids offered, so I would definitely like to see Subaru add that in the future. Uh, but you do have an auto start-stop system, which is on right now. Um, and it's a pretty good auto start-stop system, as we've been sampling out today. It's relatively smooth. I wouldn't say it's the best in the business, but it's it's all right. They've improved it over yeah, the years. Yeah, I think it's improved. Yeah. Over there it goes. It just now kicked back on. It's improved over what it used to be. I do like that it runs like a little timer, so it tells you how long it's been off and an estimation of how much fuel you save, so you can kind of, you know, see that savings rolling in. And now that we're cruising along, kind of getting into the open stretch of highway, I do want to talk about your ride quality for this Subaru Forester. Now, of course, we're in the touring trim level. The touring trim level is, of course, going to focus on that luxury side of things. And I'm very impressed with the ride quality. Now, most of the vehicles in this segment do ride really well because they're all family focused. Uh, I wouldn't say that this is really any different than most in the segment, but it is certainly a good ride quality. When you hit a bump, it soaks it up well. And I 
do say, I will say that these seats are some of the most comfortable seats I've sat in in the entire segment. I love the seats on this uh, touring trim level. I believe you get the this leather seat combination on both limited and touring trim levels. Um, so you're definitely going to enjoy these seats, that's for sure. Yeah, and I also like the really commanding view you have over the road because this it does stand a little taller than most in the segment. You do have that nice view. The hood is low, so you've got a lot of glass, big windows on the side, so it really does feel like you can see absolutely everything. And the CVT does have a shift simulation as well. Wish they'd throw in the XT, give us an XT Subaru Forester. <laughs> but let's go ahead and get our sound level reading going 55 miles an hour. Very solid. 55.7 decibels. That's a very good reading. I expect it no less because it does feel very quiet inside this cabin and very luxurious. Um, and as far as how that ranks on our sound level scale, that definitely puts it at the upper end of the segment in terms of the quietest cars. So you're only behind a, a few models in the segment like the uh, Mazda CX-5, the Mazda CX-50, and the Hyundai Tucson Hybrid. As we go around that corner there, it's a good time for me to briefly mention the driving dynamics. Of course, not a focus of this vehicle or really anything in this segment. However, it handles everything just fine. Um, you know, decent control as far as your uh, body control and the steering, nicely weighted. It is lightweight for easy maneuverability. And I do want to do one of our other signature elements, our car confection slam dunk and air ball. So our least favorite element, our favorite element. Uh, I'll go ahead and kick us off with our favorite thing. The slam dunk has got to be the overall practicality of this Forester. This is one practical option. Like Drew said, even just when it comes to visibility, this is a practical vehicle. There's a lot of glass, it has a lot of comfort, a lot of space. It's just a really great option in the segment if you are really most concerned about just the overall practicality. Right. And going hand in hand with that is the fact that compared to many options in this segment, this is going to be a lot more of a boring styled vehicle. Yeah. Um, so as we were saying, you know, it's really about being focused, I think, on the practical things in life and not being as concerned about the design and wow factor. And lastly here, I do want to talk about your warranty. Your standard super warranty applies here, three year, 36,000 miles for your basic, five year, 60,000 miles for your powertrain warranty. Now this is a very hot segment, so how much is this Forester going to cost compared to some of the rivals? Well, we're going to start at $26,395. Now keep in mind, standard all-wheel drive on every single Forester model, so about the same starting price, except you're going to have standard all-wheel drive, which is certainly a nice feature for this car. Now there are a lot of different trim levels, I'm not going to go through all of them, they're on the screen right now. You end up with this Touring model at $36,495. Now if you're curious as to a price increase, that's about $1,000 for the 2023 model year. Now, as far as this one, we do have a few options on this touring. If you do just accessories and whatnot, plus 1225 destination, we're looking at $39,241 as tested for this touring Forester. But guys, that's going to wrap up our in-depth review of this 2023 Subaru Forester Touring. If you enjoyed watching this video or found it helpful in your purchasing decisions, we would certainly appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button down below. It really helps us out because it helps get us access to the newest cars to show you all on the channel. If you're already a subscriber, thank you so much for your continued support. It means a lot to us that we're able to do this as our full-time job. Now, we do also have TikTok and Instagram pages, so go ahead and check those out. Out, and we'll catch you next time as we sample more of the latest automotive delicacies.